This instructional video is designed to introduce you to a different way of writing out notation in quantum mechanics, namely the Dirac Broadcat notation. Here I have written out in standard integral form the third and fourth postulates. Uh, the third, which gives us operator as an eigenvalue problem, and fourth, which gives us how to find the average value. Over here, written in Dirac Broquette notation, we have the same thing where this is an operator acting on a function, giving us a scalar times that function. And here we have written out in that notation the average value. Now, it's shorthand, so we don't have to write out the entire integral and write out all of the functions and do all of the alpha algebra. And this allows us to reduce some of that complexity in how we write everything up. In order to do this, we'll need a definition for the bra, which is this part, and the ket, which is the second part. And in order to figure out the entire value, the entire expression, in addition to that, we'll also need to define what the operator does to the system. And this will give us what's referred to as a complete bracket. So let's take, for example, the harmonic oscillator. So if we take the harmonic oscillator and we're going to remember that these are non-negative values, then we can define a raising operator as acting on a ket, giving us the following result. It extracts the value in the square root and then adds one to it. We can then define the lowering operator acting on the value. It's giving us the value itself under square root and then reducing it by one. So if we have this and we take advantage of these being an orthonormal set, we can do a couple of things. We can quickly evaluate the following bracket. So this is defined as acting on this by adding one to this value and pulling it out. So the bra remains put. One plus one gives us two. This gives us two as well. Because this is a scalar, we can pull that square root out. And now we have two indices that are identical. This is an orthonormal set, so this entire thing becomes one. And we have our final answer here. So by knowing the rule for that operator and applying it here, we're able to simplify down to a point where we can get an actual value. If you want to try again, this time using a lowering operator, just for completeness, we can evaluate this quantity. So the bra remains put. We apply this. In this case, we get square root of 3. 3 minus 1 is 2. We can pull the scalar square root of 3 out. And now we have two indices that are different. Because this is orthonormal, that's zero, and the entire thing is zero. And so the premise behind using Dirac notation is that if I were to write out the entire harmonic oscillator wave function and the entire description of this operator, which involves a mixture of position and momentum, then that gets very complicated. It's a great deal of awful algebra. And in those instances where what we really want to know is whether or not we have an overlap and how much that can get involved, unless we use a different kind of notation that allows us a bit of shorthand and the ability to see our results more quickly and more effectively.